So in this video, we're going to look at a few things. We're going to talk about what happened on Lake Eufaula for the stage four event. We're going to talk about the anglers who are not, as th at this point, not making the 2025 season. Those 20 anglers. We're going to go from 60 to 80. And then we'll talk about what needs to happen in that next tournament at Heavy Hitters for just a little bit. But if you can do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, click that subscribe button, become part of the team. Stage four of the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour was on Lake Eufaula this past weekend. And it was different than the first few tournaments. The first four tournaments, including the Red Crest. This was not a dominating performance from anglers who are using forward facing sonar. It was a skip the banks, put it in the weeds, get dirty, and throw it in the thick stuff. And a chatterbait, and a spinnerbait, and a worm, and other things, finesse type fishing, was what was working the best. And it doesn't mean that people weren't using forward facing sonar as the tournament as the tournament got older, but it wasn't the dominating reason anglers were catching fish. And quite honestly, Honestly, after going to Dale Hollow, Lake Eufaula was a bust. Now, Lake Eufaula's big fish probably was five or six pounds, and there were several five pound fish caught, but it was few and far between catching fish. There were even some anglers who had three or four pounds. Jacob Wheeler had three pounds after the first day. Luckily, he caught a bunch and made it into the knockout round. But it was a good old, tough, grinded out tournament. And the reason that was happening is they had an influx of water that came through almost four feet that really changed the dynamic of fishing. Now, as the tournament uh, kept going or got later in the in the days, the fishing, wa the water cleared up, the water dropped a little bit, and it was about fishing docks and grass and stuff like that. Now, there were some anglers fishing offshore, but the dominant thing this was, was fishing the banks. And it was fun to watch. At the same time, it was wasn't fun to watch because there were just few and far fish being caught. And when the average fish is probably under two pounds, I don't know if this is the place for major league fishing to go, but it isn't about where they go. It's all about the money. Who's going to pay them the most money to show up? And I think Eufaula in Oklahoma was a decent tournament, but after like Dale Hollow and seeing the slugfest that that was and the fish being caught one after another after another, to go to someplace which was much tougher allowed some of the veteran anglers to get out there and show why they are in the Bass on the Bass Pro Tour. And while there were some rookies and newer anglers that did very well, the veterans really came out. It showed out for the veterans and anglers that needed points got some extra points here. Randy Howell and Skeet Reese and a couple other guys finished inside the top 10 or top 15 probably and those points really helped them in the standings going into 2025. And the championship round included Britt Myers, Cole Fo Floyd, Drew Gill, Jeff Sprague, Luke Clausen, Martin Villa, Nick LeBrun, Randy Howell, Skeet Reese, and the eventual winner Zach Burge. And congratulations to Zach. Amazing fishing. He really had a great tournament and showed what kind of angler he is in the championship day. He just skunked everybody. It was great to watch throwing a chatterbait. He fished really, really well. And it was it was fun to watch. But like I said, I wish it could have been more catching. But congrats to, to Zach and all those top 10 anglers because a few of them needed the points to get themselves into 2025. Now, speaking of 2025, here is the bottom 20 anglers. Now, I have not taken out their worst year. Now, there's some rookies in here that have had that just haven't had a really good start to their career, but they fall into that 60, 56-ish area, there's a good chance they could still get in. So I'm only doing the bottom 20 anglers. These are the anglers that if they cut it right now at 60, they would be out. Again, not taking out their worst year. And how I've done this is I've created a spreadsheet and put all the years into Major League Fishing and went in and got their standing in the AOI. Not the points, their final standing. So Jacob Wheeler or Mark, Matt Becker had a, a one. And then I've taken that, put it in the spreadsheet, put all their years in, divided it by six, given me an average, and then their total average finish. So this is their total average finish over those six years or one year, depending on how many years they've been, depending on how many years they've been in, it's their that standing. And then again, not taking out their worst year. So from 80 to 60, these are the anglers looking in that need to do really well to get themselves into the 2025 Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour by my standards, by my calculations. And I could be wrong, but Kobe Shump, Jacoby Galelli, Joshua Weaver, Boyd Duckett, Cliff Crochet, Kelly Jordan, Gray Buck, John Murray, Jason Vance, 
Gary Klein, Keith Carson, Marty Robinson, David Walker, Brandon Coulter, Matt Lee, Scott Suggs, Justin Cooper, Shin Fukai, Dean Rojas, Dave Lefebvre, and 60th right now is Skeet Reese. And Skeet had a fantastic tournament that really jumped him up in the points. When we look at 59 through 54, Fred Rubamnis is at 59, Randy Howell is at 58, Britt Myers is at 57, Jonathan Van Dam is at 56, Ryan Salzman is at 55, and Matt Steffen is at 54. Those anglers are really close to that cut line and still need to continue to fish really well or else they could be in that drop zone. Now, I don't know if there's any exemptions. I need to say that right off the bat. If there's an exemption for someone that's in that bottom, like I'm just going to use this as an example. If there's an exemption for Boyd Duckett, there's something wrong with the system. No offense to Boyd, but Boyd has been in that bottom 10 anglers since the start of Major League Fishing. I don't know how he's still in it, but I don't know all the rules. That's the truth. I don't know all the rules. I could probably try to look them up or ask somebody, but I'm going on what I can tell myself without asking someone's opinion. That's the whole thing. I don't want it, someone else's opinion on what's going on. I'm trying to do it by the numbers, statistically. But those 20 anglers need to have some really good tournaments to make it into 2025. And it'll be fun to see the last four, three or four or five tournaments on where it ends. Lastly, Heavy Hitters is heading to Kissimmee, Kissimmee Chain Links, which is over there, not back there. Back here is Harris Chain. Over there is Kissimmee Chain Links. This should be a fun tournament. There will probably be some bigger fish caught, but we are in an absolute, I wouldn't say drought, but we have had almost zero rain. So our lakes and ponds are down drastically. Now, between now, which is the 6th through the 18th, maybe we'll get some rain. But if it were me, there would be some drastic things I would look at uh, going to fish the Kissimmee chain. If we have rain, I would look for the culverts and fish those. If not, I think I think uh, places like Shingo Creek or locking into Kissimmee or Cypress is probably going to be the best places to go. Not that they won't catch them on Toho, but I think it's going to be a fairly stingy tournament. And I say that in the nicest way. I do I think they're going to just slaughter them and catch a bunch of fish? Probably not. I don't know what they'll make the average for Toho, but with our drought the way it is, it will congregate fish into certain areas. But as the shad spawn is kind of pushing the final wave of shad pushing through, like through shingle and stuff, that is going to have a big influence on the fishing. But getting into shingle could be a real challenge because there usually is a little bar right there as you make that right turn from Big Toho Marine arena and getting over that can be a challenge at times but it also means that that those fish are going to stay on the outside of that but shingle creek will probably come into play should be a good it should be a good tournament but again the drought or the lack of rain is really going to have an influence on the fishing so thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button make sure you take a kid fishing comment below and tell me what you think get your fish on i'll talk to you soon cheers